Week four is upon us. So many matchups to break down. We have our starts of the week. And of course, you can't miss the Ironclad Lock and Loaded Boom Boom Kicker of the Week from yours truly. Check out this great episode today. Hey, Foot Clan, did you know that two thirds of guys experience noticeable hair loss by the age of 35? I unfortunately do. And most guys assume that losing their hair is inevitable as they age. But what you might not know is that there is an FDA approved solution designed to stop hair loss and maybe even regrow hair with Roman. Roman makes it convenient to get FDA approved hair loss treatment right from your phone or computer. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit. Chat with a licensed doctor from the comfort of your home. And if the doctor decides the treatment's right for you, Roman's dedicated pharmacy can ship your treatment to you with free two-day shipping. If you want to stop or prevent hair loss, starting treatment early is key. Roman is giving our members free online visit. Roman, Roman's hooking them up. They're, they're hooking them up. Free online visit, free two-day shipping when you visit GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. Hi, this is Kyle Rudolph, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Week four is upon us. Now, I appreciate good friend of the show, Vikings tight end Kyle Rudolph, introing us in. Yes. He's joined us before. Great guy. I also think that it's possible he would be the greatest children's book reader of all time. Oh, very well pronounced, a very slow cadence. Did you notice that? I oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was clear it's as good, day. Like he's I think, living in Minnesota, good Minnesota boy. I think Once we look for upon different a time. Yeah, we look for very different things in our children book reading. You're looking for like diction. I'd be looking for animation. So he's not a fit for the animation side. Exactly. Sorry. Like, what about it's, bedtime stories? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Our children, then you're putting them to sleep. You're, you're welcome, Kyle. You that's got a, your retirement figured that's out. That's a new app. Kyle Rudolph <laughs> reads you to sleep. Get on, get on that Calm app. <laughs> welcome in Thursday, September 26th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Boom, boom, kicker on the show today. Starts of the week. What? Fantasy what? forecast, news, some mailbag if we have time. Quick question of the day. Who's the hardest player for you to rank in week four right now? Oh, that's easy for me. It's Wayne Gallman because mm -hmm. we don't know exactly what he's going to be. You, there's so many things lined up perfectly, right? He's at home. They're favored. He's the only guy in town with any kind of talent. He Opportunity is so much more valuable than talent at the running back position. All that being said, it's a bad offense. It, you know, it's, it's not. An is it? It was not bad last week. Sure. Uh, I know that they they t scorched the earth last week with uh, the, the rookie sensation. Yes. Daniel Jones. Yes. But uh, I, I have a hard time believing in Wayne Gallman. You know, he's still, right now in my rankings, a very startable asset. We're 25. starting him in one of our leagues. 25 on our consensus rankings. So, But he, he's difficult. I think he's difficult because I don't know what kind of dependency the team's going to have on him. That's That's part of the question for me running a ton of routes last week, one target or whatever it was. Right. But we also, so far, haven't seen them add anybody. I mean, Elijah Penny's going to be the fullback there. Wayne Gallman's there. They've worked out some guys like Zach Zinner, no Jay Ajayi in sight. So right now, I think 25, I feel good with 25. Don't you feel like that's that's I, that's probably... I think he can easily outproduce that. He could. He could. I'm going to go with Robert Woods. This is fair. I think Robert Woods is a difficult player to rank right now. I don't think Robert Woods, the player, is any different than what he was last year. I do think that it's very normal for players like Brandon Cooks, who are now in year two with Sean McVay, 
and Cooper Cup, who is an up and coming superstar in in the league. I think it's possible for those players to take a step up, and that could that could mean that Robert sure. Woods maybe is a little bit different than than what we've had in years past. I think he's still going to have his days. I think he's still going to have his games. But maybe, you know, three weeks from now, maybe we're looking at this team a little bit less like, you know, 1A, 1B, 1C and a little bit more defined. So he's a little bit difficult for me to know what his upside is right now. Yeah, and mine is very similar to that. Mine is the heart, the player who's hard for me to rank. It's Sammy Watkins. It's the Lizard King. Oh! oh. oh. Is. He's been cold-blooded for your fantasy say, team. The past couple of weeks, he came out. He was an absolute sensation, a weak winning player in week one. Then the opportunity was there with Tyreek Hill going to miss time. And yet, the Chiefs' drives are averaging like two snaps per offensive drive because McCole Hardman and Demarcus Robinson keep taking 40-yard bombs to the house, not giving Those Sammy Watkins. jerks. <laughs> They're ruining everything <laughs> for people who have Sammy Watkins. But the, the matchup is delightful against the Detroit Lions. So, I like, yeah, it's tough he, because sh he should still – like top five is still in the range of outcomes, but he's been, like, in the 40s. Yeah, Watkins was number one week one, and then he was in the 40s week two and three, whereas Demarcus Robinson, yeah, who was, like, wide receiver 100 and something week one, he was the wide receiver one in week two, and then he followed that up being the wide receiver 29. So you're like, who who's more valuable here? But you still usually – and Pat Mahomes – breaks all the usually statements he does you still usually want the guy who's getting the most targets and that is still Watkins you've seen a little bit of the same impact that you know the not marching the ball down the field pass by pass has impacted Travis Kelsey too so not that he's been bad but just that right you know if you're not methodically moving it down the field with your your best possession guy which is Sammy Watkins I think we'd agree with that yep and your best possession tight end I mean it it's just a product of those big plays, like you said. And then they get big leads. Nobody's kind of keeping up with them. We really need these defenses to be better so that Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins can score. How about uh, just the other offenses? As just, a McCall Hardman owner, I, I disagree with you entirely. Mm. I just want the other offenses to be better. That's what it is. Come on, Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I like him a lot this week. All right, hey, we are giving away another signed jersey from Pristine Auction. We love doing this. I think last month we gave away an Alvin Kamara signed jersey. You can go to footclangiveaway.com, enter for free. We're giving away a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. Papa Josh thought this was the opportunity that we needed to go acquire and give away a Saquon Barkley jersey. To be fair, you will have it forever. That's true. I mean, and he will not be out forever. He's out. Look, you can you can dry your fantasy tears with a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. <laughs> I don't recommend it, but well, I, I don't either. The name might smudge. Mm hmm. Well, we're giving one away nonetheless. Yes. So <laughs> footclangiveaway.com. Uh, the Blitz, our weekly Next newsletter. Month is Wayne Gallman. Next up for giveaways? Mm hmm. Mm, yeah. Probably a less lasting value there. <laughs> But uh, The Blitz, our, our weekly newsletter with the five biggest stories in fantasy, comes out today. Uh, number one on that list is Melvin Gordon. Mm. So, got some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Melvin Gordon will report to the Los Angeles Chargers today. He will not play in week four. The holdout is over. We talked a lot about the implications of that yesterday, but now we have some actual news that it's happening. This is awesome. I mean, this is look. There's For some some people. Look, some people out there. I've got I've got you know in our listener league. I have Austin Eckler, and I don't have Melvin Gordon. So, obviously, less awesome for me there. But in general, this is fantastic. You know, th he's one of the best running backs in football, one of the most valuable fantasy assets. We don't want to see him sitting out the whole year or 10 weeks. You know, it, those people who drafted Melvin Gordon earlier are, are somewhat being rewarded. I mean, if you told me that he was only going to miss four games and then come back, I would have drafted Melvin Gordon yes. pretty high. Yeah, I mean, you had no idea. You had no idea what was going to happen with him. You knew at some point he was going to come back because it was slightly different than Le'Veon Bell. But we were led to believe from very 
high up news sources last year. Like this is okay. This is the week Le'Veon Bell comes back. So you, it was just a risk that I think it was still the right thing to to avoid him in those early rounds. Now, if you you took your scratcher, sometimes you win. Well, and, and, we, and the Melvin Gordon people, the drafters, are looking like that right now. We were able to, in a lot of leagues, there were people that dropped Melvin Gordon. Eckler did well. He wasn't to be seen anywhere. You know, Gordon wasn't out there. So we picked him up in the Sleeper Bowl League. Somebody right. dropped him in Sleeper Bowl and had him on our bench. And so very excited to get him back. There is going to be a press conference this afternoon with head coach Anthony Lynn. And from Ian Rappaport, he has shown up. He's there. Uh, also, update on our Sleeper Bowl League. We did beat Juju Smith-Schuster yeah. last week. So take that, Juju. I thanked him. Thank you for your long touchdown as oh, well. Oh, yeah, we thanked him in the chat right after he scored. It was fun. Ninja, you're next. All right, is that this week? That We're playing Ninja this week. All right. Well, he's he's distracted right now. That's right. He's singing mass, singing and mass masks. Singer. Uh, all right, Dallas Morning News reporting Amari Cooper received a, an MRI on Wednesday, reportedly precautionary. Not a good thing. I no. mean, I don't want a precautionary MRI. It doesn't say good things about whatever I'm getting the MRI on. You don't get a precautionary MRI when you're one with just like it's a hundred. Oh, you're scheduled for a Wednesday MRI. Well, I was, I was thinking about getting one. Right. Just, just in case. I when does it become be just a cautionary? When is it? Uh, instead what's the of, difference? <laughs> instead of precautionary? Yeah. Like, the, is this step one? Then you go cautionary MRI, then regular MRI? I think they're getting this wrong. I think this is a cautionary MRI. Maybe that's Pre true. Precautionary would be, I'm fine. I just want one. <laughs> That's precautionary. I don't think that we're analyzing the language perfectly, but but I I've chosen to. Yeah. <laughs> Nonetheless. Regardless, keep an eye out. Uh, it's his ankle. You want to. And make this sure is not the. This is the other foot. This is a different below the shin injury than he was dealing with at the beginning of the season. All right, Mike Tomlin is optimistic Vance McDonald will play in Week Four against the Bengals. I'm not playing him. I think you might not have a choice. I mean, there are there are situations where you need. A tight end, and are He's, you more off of him because of Mason Rudolph, or are you off of him because of I'm the off, shoulder? I'm off of him because of the injury. Optimistic? Okay. like Maybe if this was a Sunday morning game, but optimistic that your tight end is going to play on Monday night. Like, I, I'm out, man. That's I, fair. I, I totally get that in fantasy football, you could be very wrong, and Vance McDonald goes and catches two touchdowns, and you feel like crap. But my process would have me what about, benching Vance McDonald. You have to be. What about prepared. Eifert? I mean, what about putting Eifert on your on your bench I as mean, a as as your pivot move? It's pretty crappy pivot, right? I mean, would you go with Eifert or Uzama? Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe maybe we just steer clear and you make other plans. Yeah, that that's probably how I would approach it. We do have starts of the week today, so we'll talk through some tight ends that we do like and get into some different names in the fantasy forecast as we preview the week four games. Quick pa practice report update. Damian Williams with the knee didn't practice. T.Y. Hilton, Mike Williams didn't practice. Chris Godwin with a hip injury. This was a surprise. Didn't practice. He's listed his day-to-day. -day. Also was not spotted on Thursday's practice as of this recording. Rashad Penny didn't practice. That one's interesting. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Today, if he doesn't show up today, then it, you can reason that he's not quite rebounding as quickly as head coach Pete Carroll. That hopes. was that was a devastating walkthrough. Why well, you can't walk too fast on those, Mike? <laughs> you ever done power walking? I've never done power walking. It's one of my proudest accomplishments. No, uh, it's too bad. It's have you? Fun. Have you? Wait, power, you have not power walked. Oh, I've I've done power walking in my day. Now that's different than just walking fast, Mike. Of course, it's okay. It's different because it's exercise. He's walking. like sometimes I really got to go to the bathroom, <laughs> so I power walk there. You never power walk the the potty. But power like, walk? are you holding little weights? No. <laughs> like, oh, let's do this. And do you roll? Is it heel to toe? Heel to toe of on the power? Of course it is. I, on the quick power walk, my mechanics are sound. My shorts are short, and I'm power walking. I believe all. that part for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Devin Singletary, Mark Andrews didn't practice. Mark Andrews has been um, not practicing. Yeah, he's getting managed. He's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's being, he's being managed. Uh, I, I'm, I've just got pictures in my head of 
Mike power walking now. And I think he's wearing the 80s, 90s yes. uh, jazzer size type of yeah, outfit. the shorts, of course, and the headband. Yeah, I was going to say headband has the to. The high white socks. Yeah. Didn't Suzanne Summers? You, you, you look like Suzanne Summers in this well, situation. Yeah, after I power walk, then I get on the thigh master. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, the MRI was negative. There is an update to the Amari Cooper news that we just got in. So it was a negative, uh, negative for anything bad, I guess. It's, in or out tomorrow. The verbiage of, of that, like we all know what it means, but it's still strange. You're like, right. what were the results for the MRI? Negative. Oh, no. Ah! Yeah. Well, what were the results? Positive for something negative. <laughs> right. All right. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news. Download the free app today. Now, we want to thank today's sponsors before we head into the fantasy forecast because they keep this show going. So we're going to start here. If you are a true adventurer who loves traveling with your friends. Adventurers out there, my friends. Or family to totally unique places. You do not want to sleep. We talk about sleepers all the time. Yeah. Don't sleep on New Mexico for That's your right. next travel destination. Before the show, I was just talking <laughs> to Brooks. Now, Brooks, when you came down here, you moved here from Michigan. You took a little drive through uh, the greater part of the United States. You went through New Mexico. And what did you say right before the show? I had no idea what to expect, but it was, it was beautiful. I yeah. couldn't believe it. And, and that's, that's why you don't sleep on New Mexico, filled with scenic wilderness areas that you can discover with hikes, auto tours. It gives you a new appreciation for all the things that they have. You sleep in New Mexico. Yeah. You, not, not on it. Right. Yeah. Difficult to sleep directly on it. Uh, you cannot miss the cu cuisine Ooh, of New Mexico. Never. Did you know that the chili capital of the world, Jason? We're talking green chili cheeseburger. I love chili. You do? Are you I a do. cute I, monster I fan? I love chili. Uh, they are also home to the most funky small towns, including Pie Town. Okay? Pie Town. So much to learn about New Mexico. To do that and plan your trip, visit NewMexico.org. That's NewMexico.org. New Mexico, true. Foot Clan, listen up. Fame, money, ego. These things can make athletes seem superhuman, but what, what happens when those in professional sports reveal the darker side of humanity? Oh, Is this the Antonio Brown podcast? Uh, he's probably going to be on this show a little bit later. Every week, the Parcast Network's new, new podcast, Sports Criminals, Explore some of the most significant sports crimes throughout the world. Some of these crimes are shocking, like the illegal dogfighting ring by Atlanta Falcons quarterback Michael Vick. Others are disheartening, like the burglary, the controlled substance charges against NFL draft bust Ryan Leaf, or this one hits hard, like other crimes that went undetected for years, like the case of Tim Donaghy, the mm. referee who was betting on games and hosed our Phoenix Suns. Oh, that's rough. Don't bring that up, Mike. Never forget... But you can you can check out those stories and more. Sports criminals, athletes you thought you knew, crimes you won't forget. Listen and, sub and subscribe to Sports Criminals for free on Spotify and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Or visit parcast.com slash sports criminals to listen now. Fantasy Forecast. I'll say something I learned from that read about sports criminals they were very specific it's tim donaghy they it's were hard specific G about yeah, that hard g i sound. was going to correct you yeah well I, was you would have been corrected so it's donaghy yeah what? maybe that's where his problems began yeah <laughs> he was misunderstood his whole life being called the wrong name i told you it's important to get people's names right <laughs> All right, yes. JJ. They start betting on games. Yep, that's what happens. <laughs> Yesterday, it was like if, if, you're, if your fantasy season goes wrong, you're a looter in the streets. Now, if someone mispronounces your name, you're allowed to... Well, that's that's why it came out. I don't know if you guys heard this, but it's actually Pete Rosé. Uh. I disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Two teams on by this week, the 49ers and Jets. If you play them, zero points coming your way, so don't. Thursday Night Football... Deshaun Jackson officially out. Alshon Jeffrey officially in. Packers, Eagles. We previewed, previewed the game yesterday if you want to listen to that Thursday night preview, but I'm excited for that. It is a Thursday night game that I'm, I'm, yes. I'm primed for. I want yep. to see if the Packers can go to 4-0. Oh. 
All right, let's start with the weekly matchups here. The Panthers at one and two take on the Texans. They're two and one. This game has a 47 point over under. The Texans are four and a half point favorites. Kyle Allen v. Deshaun Watson. We have Watson as our quarterback two on the week consistency or on our consensus rankings. So Watson's obviously in. Kyle Allen, the question that people have as fantasy owners, fantasy quarterback streamers, was last week a fluke? I will say it was not a fluke. Kyle Allen is surrounded by incredible talent at every skill position that he needs to be a successful fantasy quarterback and real-life quarterback. However, definitely inflated by the the defense of the Arizona Cardinals. Kyle Allen, I'm not looking to play him in one quarterback leagues, but if you're in a two quarterback and you scooped him up, I, I think he's a fine in a super flex. Man, I, I would want one more. I, I would scoop him up for sure if you're in a super flex, have well, that if third quarterback. He's already but, gone. If you no, were no, in a no. Super I'm flex. saying I would have, but I, I'm, I'm not going to start him. I think the fact that you come out against the Arizona Cardinals who don't have any DBs, you know, Patrick Peterson suspended, Robert Alford was gone. Going to the Texans now with a game of film to watch, I would, I would want a week off, but your point is well taken. The weapons are great. Between Greg Olson, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, this is the reason I loved Cam before the season. If he was healthy, he'd be balling out. This was almost my answer for the most difficult uh, players to, to uh, rank this week. When Kyle it comes, Allen? Not Kyle Allen, DJ Moore and uh, <laughs> Curtis Samuel because of Kyle Allen. Sure, it makes sense. Kyle Allen did have – we've seen a couple of good games from him in the pros. It was against – New Orleans at the end of last year, three touchdowns, had a had a nice game. I, I look at Kyle Allen very similar to how I would try to rank Daniel Jones. And like you said, last week they had a, a pretty uh, easy matchup, you might say, but the Texans are an easy matchup too for fantasy quarterbacks so far this year, 27th in the league in points given up. So it just depends on the options you have. We have them at QB19 by consensus ranking, so if you have somebody that's a better option, you go there. Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson. We already know on the Carolina side, Christian McCaffrey is going to ball out. He does it most every week. and I would start him. Now, he only played 92% of snaps last week, Jason. Only? Oh, wow. He, they, gave him, they gave him a breather. He had played every single snap on the season up to last week. That dude's cardio is insane. That dude's everything is insane. <laughs> Fair point. He, he's a player with a lot of natural talent that has taken it to the next level by working his butt off year in and year out and leveling up. Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson. We said, we said on the show yesterday, these guys are just players. You, you just don't really want to play them, right? I mean, this is a, it's a tough situation to be able to count on them. If you have to pick one, Carlos, it's yeah. Carlos Hyde just from a reliability standpoint, right? I think Duke Johnson is just you can drop him. Like he, uh, you, you make room on your roster. Carlos Side, I don't blame people if they if they don't want to play him, but he's still a bench player to me with bye weeks coming up. I think Duke Johnson. I mean, I'd rather have Chris Thompson than Duke Johnson. Oh, oh, one hundred percent. He's far more explosive, and and uh, we've seen more over time from him. And they they utilize the pass catching running back in Washington, whereas Deshaun Watson doesn't. You know, that's just not what he right is used to doing. Did have a uh, season-high five targets last week, Duke Johnson did. Curious if this team starts to give him more opportunities if they don't think Hyde is uh, efficient enough. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, you said they're hard to rank this week. We have them at the kind of RB or wide receiver three range. Both playable. Both playable. DeAndre Hopkins, obviously out there. Uh, you know, Will Fuller. <clears throat> He's also difficult to rank because he. we know what he can do. And it's not that he's off the field. I mean, he's week one, 97% of snaps. Week two, 91. Week three, 97% of snaps. He's out there all the time. Stills is hurting him. Yes, that's, that's a fair point, uh, that they have another speedster that they can go to. Uh, Stills had a, you know, a pretty nice game last week. Will Fuller just has – it's not hit yet. And when you're – he's okay to throw out there as a flex play, as, a, as that uh, – that nitro button, so to speak, for your for your starting roster. But it, it's really unfortunate that through the first three weeks, we're just we're not seeing the big. You're not seeing the big play that you had hoped when you drafted him. And we know that Kiki is kind of working himself back in. He's sitting behind 
stills right now on the rotation, but he did get out there a little bit last week. You wonder if that starts to even further muddy the kind of wide receiver it two could. landscape for those guys. And then tight end wise, thoughts on Greg Olson having another solid week. Greg Olson is he's a, a weekly play at this point. To know that the matchup technically through three weeks is not great. The with the Texans giving up points to the tight end position, but in this landscape of tight end, Greg Olson gets targets. And has upside every single week. Yeah, you, you start him, but you're not going to get anything like what you got against no, Cardinals. No, certainly not. I think this is going to be an interesting game. I think Kyle, and Allen, Kyle Allen will be able to keep up against this Texans defense the way that they're playing this year. Panthers have the fastest pace of play in the NFL now after last week. So that's just good for the fantasy options. Yeah. Now, who would you rather have between DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel? Rest of the season. It's, it's still Moore. Yeah, I, I would lean DJ Moore as well. But I but they haven't really separated. That. Yeah, it was just like, more it, explosive plays from Moore thus far. More explosive, I see what <laughs> you did. It was yeah. just one of those things weird where he only got two targets last week with Kyle Allen, so you wonder if it switches with with him in there. All right, the Cleveland Browns at one and two traveled to Baltimore to take on the Ravens at two and one. Interesting fact here. The game's a 45-and-a-half point over-under, so if you look at the implied point totals, the Browns are at 19-and-a-half points. The Ravens are at 26-and-a-half. That's what Vegas expects from this game. Ravens are six-and-a-half point favorites. The Browns have yet to hit their team implied total this season. That is a product of an offense that is... Overhyped. Yeah, clearly over... The expectations are have been much higher. I think in this game, being six-and-a-half point dogs... We're starting to get closer to what we're actually seeing. Baker and Lamar, what do you do here? Lamar, you, Lamar's automatically in yes, this matchup you, at home. I'm not playing Baker against the Ravens. No, that would not be a wise decision. No. Uh, in 2018, he had a touchdown every 2.7 pass attempts in the red zone. This year, 20 touchdowns, zero, or I'm sorry, that was last year, 20 touchdowns, right. zero interceptions. This year in the red zone, it's been trash. Three of fourteen. That's how the game ended last week. So we need Goodness. to. I think we're we're all saying the same thing. We need to see more from Baker before he becomes a streaming option in any capacity. Nick Chubb volume is 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 supporting Nick Chubb throughout this season. Yep, and he got he was uh, he was receiving those targets this past week. Seven targets. I don't expect seven to keep up, but Nick Chubb he's out there. He's going to get. A ton of volume. Unfortunately, this matchup sucks. He's been an RB2 or better all three weeks. I think the volume is great. You're, you're obviously going to play Chubb. You should. Mark Ingram, you're obviously playing Mark Ingram. But a bigger question fantasy owners probably want to know when they think about selling high, is this going to be the Mark Ingram we get throughout the season? When you look at the schedule, he did what he needed to do, but it was Miami, Arizona, Kansas City it's going to get harder for Mark Ingram, not easier, and he's been one of the most efficient runners as well, touchdown-to-carry ratio. It's his touchdown-to-carry to ratio is is absolutely out of control. He's carried the ball 43 times, and he has five rushing touchdowns. Now he has Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Seattle on the docket. I don't; Those don't intimidate me to the point where I'm thinking it's going to change dramatically. At home against Cleveland, then Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Seattle are – Pretty nice matchup. So they, they are, and what you've seen is we've talked about this over the years. Is that a, a mobile rushing quarterback oftentimes helps the running game, and you see it. You see why it happens. Lamar runs so much that defenders are always looking to see if he's handing the ball off or keeping it, and they pause for a second, and that helps Mark Ingram. I think Mark Ingram is going to continue to be a a great weekly play for the next half of the season, but he, you know. He's not getting three touchdowns uh, like he did last week. Four? You're going with four? <laughs> All right. Of course. Beckham and Landry, you, you obviously can play Beckham. I think yeah. you probably sit Landry in this matchup. He's more in the – I don't know. He's, he's a must-bench player. I, I don't blame you if you want to kind of hang on to him and see what happens if this offense gets going because he's very talented. He's had seven targets, seven targets, nine targets. Jarvis Landry is the perfect example of – fantasy not matching the NFL because Jarvis Landry is a really freaking good wide receiver as is Stephon Diggs but the the opportunity is is not there for for, for the fantasy points that we need he, Jarvis Landry can be a great fantasy player when he's getting targets like he did in, in Miami but 
he's not getting those targets, so but he's he is a bench for me. Or if if you're playing him, my expectations are low end wide receiver three at best. So one of the things that I'm doing in my fantasy leagues is targeting Marquise Brown everywhere. Yes, I've been trying to acquire him. He's got a 26 percent target share. We have him as the wide receiver 21 in this matchup. I think he finishes inside the top 20 on the over the course of the year, and I think as it becomes rougher for Mark Ingram in some of these other matchups that aren't quite the cakewalks that he's had, it's only going to benefit Marquise Brown, who's seeing such a significant amount of the targets. He gives you everything you want. you got a high target chair. You've got a young player with explosive play ability, so he can win you a week with one Deshaun Jackson-style play, and he's the favorite of Lamar Jackson. So I'm actually... You know, I went out and I offered lots of different players for Marquise Brown. Not everybody, not many people budging, but I still would be targeting him in my leagues. What do you guys think about Hollywood? One hundred percent, I agree with this. Like, this is the, this is your perfect opportunity to buy low, and I think it, it might be your last one to. And it's not really that it's buying low, but it, you may be able to convince the person who has Hollywood Brown to to trade them away because he only had two receptions for forty nine yards, but he had nine targets. Lamar Jackson's accuracy, it will be suspect from time to time. You you saw that this past week with Lamar, that, that game against Miami, that's not who Lamar Jackson is going to be week in and week out. But Hollywood Brown, I think, it has become a very high-end fantasy option. The, the target share, to me, I'm is has been very, very surprising. His ability is not, but the target share is. I think it just speaks to, I'm a big John Harbaugh fan. And I think it speaks to a well-run team when you take, you know, you have a team where we're concerned about wide receivers having value in this offense. Then you draft a wide receiver in the first round, and then you put them in a position to succeed. And then the team builds around that. I just, we don't always see that, right? You see, you have a yeah, lot of yeah. talented players that just have limited opportunities to showcase themselves. Hollywood just ended up in a great position. And it's, it's not just Harbaugh. It's, it's also Greg Roman. I mean, no doubt. Like that was the perfect hire to coach up Lamar Jackson, and you know, like when you go back and you realize what has happened, perhaps we all should have been higher on on Hollywood Brown because, like Sammy Watkins with Tyrod Taylor, his his big monster year where he was over a thousand and, and nine touchdowns in thirteen games, that was Tyrod and Greg Roman. Yeah, and Hollywood is an incredible player. Yeah. There's a reason he was a first-round draft pick while injured. And being miniature-sized. Yeah, because yeah. he's lightning. Mark Andrews is our tight end four on the week. I guess we're buying into a bounce-back game for Mark Andrews in this one? Yeah, I mean, you monitor the injury. The injury could be uh, part of the problem last week and this week, but in the tight end landscape, how do you not start Mark Andrews? And I, and I, watched, I watched a lot of those snaps last week for Mark Andrews. I can tell you. It wasn't all the injury problem. It was a lot of inaccuracy from right. Lamar Jackson. He was open. He had opportunities. Ball was thrown behind him. I think it's brighter this week if Lamar can get him the rock. Chiefs at 3-0 and take on the Lions, who are also undefeated, 2-0-1. <laughs> they are. They should I be 3-0. and They really should have not tied that Arizona Cardinals. You know, a, a friend of the show, Adam Lefko, tweeted this morning how happy he is for Buffalo Bills fans and the Lions fans because these are long-suffering organizations and fan bases, and I think both of their early season success is real. You know, they're pretty good teams, and the Lions are going to lose this week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is a fact. The question oh. is, by how much? Right now, right. the Chiefs are only favored by six and a half points. I would, I would bet on the Chiefs. You like the Chiefs here. They are six and a half point fairs. The game has a spectacular fifty four and a half point over under. Puts the Chiefs at thirty points, the Lions at twenty four. It is always difficult to know when you can turn to Matthew Stafford as a quarterback streamer. Yep. Are you wearing the snapback hat this week? Is Matthew Stafford on your list of streaming? Candidates. Not only am I wearing it, Ooh. I am Matthew Stafford. You're also a member. I well, I'm turning it around. Like it will be a backwards facing cap in in honor of Matthew Stafford. I like him a lot this week. He he should have come through this last week against the Eagles, but we had TJ Droppinson letting everybody down. 
And I think that he's in a perv- he's he's back at home. He's in the dome. I love Stafford this week. You know, the Chiefs have have really been torched by tight ends, and I know people are afraid of TJ Dropinson, the the right. the hawk strap. Uh since week 1, you you paid up, you got him. You've been super disappointed. Really hard to play him after the last couple of weeks. I think he's a fine play this week. The matchup at home against Kansas City. They're going to need to throw the ball. Kansas City has not done well against tight ends. This is a, a Hawkins. This is a, a Hockey's week. Oh, yeah, I I tend to agree with you. I think that he he would be a candidate for you know a shot in the arm start of the week type of guy. I don't know if either of you guys picked him this week, but he's in that category. Patrick Mahomes on pace for six thousand passing yards. So because of that fact alone, He's I will go rid- ahead and ridiculous. start it. I'm going to go ahead and start him this week. Yep. Uh, for what it's worth, the Lions, by the way, giving up 32.5 points per game to the wide receiver position. That's 22nd in the league. we got to feel good about Watkins, Robinson, Hardman. If you've yes. got them, you're starting them. Yep. They're attached to Patrick Mahomes. And maybe even more so with Damian Williams on the, on the shelf right now, LaShawn McCoy banged up, Daryl Williams – Sure, I, I think Darrell Williams is a great play if those two guys are out, but that I, doesn't mean that this team doesn't put more on the back of Mahomes because they ex- can. I would expect LaShawn McCoy to play. They're saying that the ankle injury is minor. He had the ankle injury last week, still played, had a great game. He was not the the workhorse. He got the touchdowns, had the better fantasy game, but you're right, it's still last week it, it was Darrell Williams who had more opportunity. Um, so this week... I think you could start Daryl Williams and LaShawn McCoy. I, I agree. If yeah. uh, Assuming that Damian Williams is, is not yet ready to suit up. Carryon Johnson is our RB12 on our consensus rankings, and you can see all of our rankings use the start sit, start, sit tool at thefantasyfootballers.com on the website. But Carryon, Jason, you like him this week? Yeah, I love him. We'll talk about him a little bit later. I mean, really? Obviously. Back to the well. I'm a big carry on Johnson Back fan. Back to the well. Wow. This matchup is uh, very good for him. I, I think he'll be fine. Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, you still lean Galladay's way in this decision. Would you start both players because of the matchup and the over-under? I would. Galladay, is, he's locked in as the one. Marvin Jones had the big game over a hundo and a touchdown this past week. And the, and the target share for Marvin Jones has been been going up the last two weeks so I think you can play Jones as a it three. would be it would be difficult for me to not play Marvin Jones in this matchup at home against Kansas City where you know the, the implied team total for the Lions is still pretty good at 24 you know he's he's one of those when you're looking at a flex play I always want my flex play to be able to have a monster game and Marvin Jones could go out there and completely ball out like he did last week all right, the Patriots at 3-0 and take on the Bills at 3-0. and This game's a 42-and-a-half point over-under. I think we're expecting a much more defensive struggle in this game. Patriots with a 24-point implied point total as seven-point favorites, and the Bills are at 17 points. Tom Brady v. Josh Allen. Now, Jason, you're the highest on Josh Allen on the week. He's the QB9 on the season. This is a difficult matchup. The, pa- the Patriots are... I would say the best defense in football. Statistically, they've had very easy matchups, but they did what they needed to do. They're literally giving up. This seems like a typo. This has to be a typo, but it's not. (laughs) 5.9 points to the quarterback, 10 to the running back, 17 to all wide receivers total in a game, which is number one, and then three to the tight end position is another way of saying this. They're giving nothing up to anybody. So are the Bills at 3-0 and with the success they've had, are they the team that's going to be able to finally challenge New England's defense? Maybe some of the run pass ability of Josh Allen can keep them on their heels. What do you think? I don't think they're going to be able to challenge much. I, I've got Josh Allen higher in the rankings, but he's still not a, uh, he's still not a start. He's not a top 12 guy for me. Uh, you look at last year when he came back the second half of the year and was dominant. Josh Allen was running the ball like crazy. He played New England in you know back then. Granted, it was on the road, two hundred and seventeen yards, one touchdown, two turnovers, only rushed for thirty yards. But the, there's five point seven points on the table, Jason, for ugh. him. That's what the Patriots are giving up per game. Five point seven points. 
They lead the league in sacks and interceptions. Yeah, I, I, I do not believe that the Buffalo Bills have a good offensive game here at all. But I do think they have got a great defense. I'm very interested to see, can they slow down this New England offensive machine? I think they do slow it down. I've had a hard time. I've been going back and forth on this game. You know, the, at the beginning of the week, I kind of thought the Patriots would come in, blow them out, establish themselves at the top of the division. I'm I'm starting to bend myself a little bit more towards this being a low-scoring affair. The Buffalo Bills defense will be primed. They're at home. And the Patriots don't have Antonio Brown anymore. They have a banged-up Julian Edelman, who did practice. Yeah. But, but still, there there there's a little bit of risk there. And when you talk about, hey, Tom Brady's got to move the ball with Josh Gordon and Philip Dorsett against this defense, which is one of the best in football right now. I think it could be a, a little bit of a lower scoring game. We did get news just now that Devin Singletary returned to practice today. Wow. So Devin Singletary, Frank Gore on the, at the running back position for the Bills, Michelle, James White, Rex Burkhead. This game is wild because I'm, I'm very excited to watch this game, very fascinated to see how it plays out. And the only player that I'm like, okay, I'll start this guy. It's the it's the guy coming off an injury. It's Julian Edelman. I like I'm not playing Sony. I'm not playing Sony just based off of what has happened already to him and his workload. Then you add in that the matchup is ridiculous. Josh Gordon. I'm lowering my expectations against the Buffalo Bills defense and Tre'Davious White. Frank Gore becomes far less appealing for his volume if Devin Singletary is going to play. like this, It's crazy that there are so many fantasy-relevant players in this game on both sides of the field, and I really don't want to play any of them. I agree with that. I think that you trust Vegas is over-under in this game, and Buffalo being at home, it, it means a lot to me. Divisional matchup, you know, they've competed in the past, even in years where Buffalo's struggled. So, you know, I, I don't want to repeat the same refrain that got me in trouble with the Dolphins matchup being a divisional matchup at home, but the Bills are a far better team than the Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, I I am I'm okay with a Sony Michelle start if you need to, or a James White start. I'm not bullish, but I'm not completely off the way that, that, that you two are. All right, the uh the the way that Mike is. The way that I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm okay it with it. Sounded like you agreed. But sure. I'm glad for the, the insight. The way that Mike is completely off I, I still think that the one place that they can beat the Bills is at the running back position, and I, you know, you just you just trust Brady and Belichick to get the job done. Chargers at one and two take on the Dolphins at zero and three. Chargers are fifteen and a half point favorites, forty four point over under. They won't have Melvin Gordon back, and gosh darn it, they won't need him because they're taking on the Dolphins. So, thank goodness, some start of the weeks permeating through the the Chargers side of the ball. Uh, Austin Eckler is currently Mike and I's number one running back on the week by for our rankings and projections. Miami's giving up the most rushing yards in the league, a staggering 189 per game. Wow. How is that possible? Oh, it's possible, all right. Well, teams are up usually 40 to 3 by the half, and so then you run the ball, which is why I think – Obviously, if you have Austin Eckler, you're going to start him. But I actually think Justin Jackson, is he, he got a little bit more work. He's been getting he more did. work. And I, I think that he is a flex-worthy start this week against this Dolphins because of the matchup, because of how bad the Dolphins have been. I, I think you could do worse than Justin Jackson. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he's a flexible player this week. He's had a few big runs called back. He, I think he's looked explosive. I think that both players have looked really good in the running game. You're not starting any Dolphins at all. You're not. No. Please not. No. But. But what about. What about just kidding. Oh. You don't even know what name to say next, do you? Do I mean, you? if I had to play someone. What about it, Dan Marino? Yeah, you can play Dan Marino this week. If I had to play someone, it would, of course, be Kenyon Drake. Sure. Of course. And I would love to see it. You should try that. Keenan Allen, he leads the league in targets, receptions, receiving yards, air yards, and target share. That's okay. This week, he goes up against Xavier Howard, who just gave up multiple touchdowns to Amari Cooper. Jason pulled up a clip before the uh, the show 
of him giving up on a play. You talk about why things start to kind of snowball. Over the course of a game, playing defense when you're down four scores, not as fun as when you're in a competitive matchup. Xavier Howard's great. Yes. He's a, he's a phenomenal player. He's not been good this year because how do you give it your all? No pass rush, Dolphins? which breaks down any cornerback. You know, you, you can't cover a guy for 15 seconds, 10 seconds, however long it takes for them to be back in the pocket. And so you're in a position now where obviously Keenan Allen's a start. I think you're going to have opportunities outside of Keenan Allen this week. I'm a big Mike Williams fan. Yes, I know he missed practice on Wednesday. Last week, I, I danced with the devil a little bit with Marlon Mack, who was dealing with practice reports. I'm just telling you that if Mike Williams is active, I'm a, he's a big start for me. There's a lot of uh, opportunity to go around there. Travis Benjamin's banged up. And so I think Mike Williams will have more opportunities this week in a matchup against a team giving up 33 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver, and I don't think it's all going to be Keenan Allen. The, the only discussion for me here for Keenan Allen, it's related to the future. Because like, we, we know when, Keenan, when Melvin Gordon is out, Keenan Allen sees a huge uptick in opportunities, and the offense runs through him. You've been saying that for weeks. And it's not that Keenan Allen disintegrates and goes away by any stretch when Melvin Gordon comes back. But how are you? How are you guys feeling with the expectations? Because you know, like you just ran through that list. I mean, that's that's an absolute ridiculous list of accolades for the first three weeks for Keenan Allen. But Melvin Gordon coming back. How do you? How well, are you approaching Keenan Allen? He's going to have a monster week this week against Miami. And so, if you wanted to trade high, if he does have another monster week, people are going to offer number one wide receiver overall value. If you can get back a stud, an app, you know, if you can get back a really quality wide receiver and a running back or something so you, like that. You're, you have to get multiple pieces if yes. you're considering trading Keenan Allen. Yes, but I, I do think Keenan Allen dips a little bit as the season goes along, but he's still going to be good. He's still going to be a top 12 guy. All right, uh, let's go to the Raiders-Colts matchup. The Raiders at 1-2, and two, the Colts 2-1. and one. The game's in Indianapolis. They're seven-point favorites. It's a 45.5 point over-under. Derek Carr, Jacoby Brissett. A lot of people in on Jacoby Brissett this week. Are you one of them? Yep. I, I, I mean, I, I think he was a great streaming option last week. I think he's an even better streaming option this week. Jacoby Brissett, Matthew Stafford. Who do you prefer Stafford. this week? I would go Stafford for the upside of a of a shootout. This game does not have the recipe of a shootout. If the Colts get up, they will continue to run the ball because they can, and I think they will in this game. Jacoby Brissett's just been very efficient. Yeah. Two touchdowns week one, three touchdowns week two, two touchdowns week three. A lot of those going to T.Y. Hilton, though, and if T.Y. Hilton's out in this game, that definitely does that hurts. change your expectation for Jacoby Brissett? If T.Y. was not there, I would look to pivot off of Brissett as a streamer. All right, another player that I'm targeting, actually both of these players at running back, I'm targeting in a lot of leagues. I think they're both, uh, I think they're both very interesting trade targets. J Josh Jacobs right now, He's only got one reception on the season. He was he took four IV bags in the middle of an, one game where people were worried about Jalen Richard being out there. He's their future at the position. I think it's better for him over the duration of the year. So I'm targeting him. Now in this game, we have him ranked as the RB19 on the road. So a uh, little bit of risk in this specific matchup. But the Colts defense has given up 24 and a half points to the running back position, and there there should be opportunity for him to run. And then Marlon Mack, I've got him at RB7 this week. He's got the most carries in the NFL, 20 rushing attempts per game, and I still view him as a buy-low player because I think when you headed into the season, sans Andrew Luck, expect expectations have changed for him and less established than some of the other bigger names out there. So I actually think you can acquire Marlon Mack in a lot of leagues slightly below his true value, which I think will sustain throughout the year. What do you guys think about Marlon Mack both this week and over the course of the season? I, I tried to trade for him in the listener league. I offered uh, Sammy Watkins and LaShawn McCoy. Was quickly turned down on that. Uh, but I, I agree with you, Andy. The, the, the Colts offense, Marlon Mack is so incredibly important to this offense, and he's been good. He's not going to go away, barring injury. He's got a little bit of injury risk because of – the history of missing games. But in the meantime, 
Their offensive line is great. Their head coach is super smart, and he's a talented player. All right, Mike, what do you think of Tyrell Williams this week? Uh, you're just you're hoping for a touchdown. The Colts' defense has been holding up very well against wide receivers, at least fantasy wise. He's he, Tyrell Williams. Like I see him, he's pretty close to a weekly wide receiver to play because it's it's him and Darren. I am the Walrus as the two guys that. You, oh, oh yeah! Look, Tyrell Williams is, but he's more of a wide receiver three this week. Darren Waller has a 30.2% target share. <laughs> and, like, it's going up this week. That is bananas. Yeah, actually, I actually disagree with that. I think it's going down this week. Yeah, I don't think Waller's going to sustain this. I think teams are going to start paying attention to him because they don't have as many other options. They just released Ryan. How have they not done it already? Well, because there's been three games, and he broke. You know, he had the monster 13 reception game last week, and they were meaningless receptions. So if you think the game's going to be a blowout, maybe you get more meaningless receptions from Darren Waller. I, I don't. Think, I think you're going to see a lot more Hunter Renfro over the course of this year as they well. Mean they mean a lot to me and my fantasy team. They, I don't they, of think the do. Colts care about Darren Waller. I think they've seen Darren Waller catch a bunch of passes that are all worthless. That's the, fair. the way that the Colts play defense is they stop the big plays. You know, they're funneling everything down. Go, go ahead. Beat us in front of us. You're not going over the top. And that's that's bad for Tyrell Williams and good for Darren Waller. I think they're going to be like, sure, can continue to be worthless 100 times a game in reality, it, but it will be a monster fantasy game. No, you could you could be right. I mean, if if teams don't care that he's soaking up the you know run through the air situation. I just think over the course of the season, we've also seen the product of a limited Josh Jacobs and a Josh Jacobs not used in the passing game yet. That should take away some of it. And like I said, Hunter Renfro, they released Ryan Grant. They're going to start integrating him, and he's an underneath type of player too. What I'm saying is Derek Carr will find a way to be meaningless in the shallow range to a couple other players as well. Right now, Darren Waller's just – at an incredible pace. He's on, on on pace for 138 catches. It's a 30% target share. He's just blown right. up, my friends. Right. It's not gonna it's not gonna stay this level. I, I agree with that, but I do think the matchup I like this week. Eric Ebron. We have him as the tight end twelve on the year. Are you comfortable with Ebron if you're a Kittle owner? Yep. And then you've got other options like uh, OJ Howard, TJ Hawkinson. How would you order Ebron and Howard and Hawkinson. First, I need to know what what is the health of T.Y. Hilton. Like, uh, yeah, that could make a big difference. Huh? So it's it's a little bit of a spoiler here, but we're going to get into it in the next minute or two. But right now, I have Eric Ebron as my star of the week at the tight end position. But this is based off of T.Y. Um, Hilton's current participation. Like, if Hilton's out, absolutely, I'm I'm in on Eric Ebron because the the matchup is fine against the Oakland Raiders, but. So that that's what I'm looking for for Ebron. Yeah, the the Raiders gave up 20 fantasy points to uh, Mr. Travis Kelsey and the Chiefs in Week Two last week against Minnesota, four for 71 against the tight end. It makes me happy. Yeah, to big hear, Irv. To make it makes me yeah, happy yeah. to hear you say that, Mike. It's above because, the law. Uh, I saw it. you picked him up to play him. This I did. Week. I did. I did pivot back to Ebron for my start in place of uh, George Kittle. So that makes me happy. Thank you for. Thank you for thinking of. Me. I would still prefer Hawkinson over Ebron, but by the slightest margin, if I if I could choose between those two guys, I like the upside of. I Hawkinson. would agree even with, with that. even with Hilton out. To to me, Hilton being out is not a benefit to Ebron. Ebron's a touchdown scoring guy. Well, and, Hilton scored four times on the year. That should be a benefit to him. But my point is, Hilton's been Hilton helps move the ball, helps give more opportunities. So. Sure, may, you can argue it either way, but I don't. I don't see that as a major boon that only benefits Ebron. All right, it starts time. Starts of the week. All right, it's week four. We've got some starts of the week for you. All of our rankings available at thefantasyfootballers.com, the Start Sit tool. We update our rankings multiple times every single day based on the news, information, weather reports, all that stuff. Jason is smirking. <laughs> yeah, I'm just smirking at uh, who I've got in for tight end. Uh, oh, 
My good. This, did someone else write that in, or is that legitimate? No, I I wrote that in. All right, starting you, okay. We're, we're, starting at the tight end position. No, Jason. we we need to not start here, so we can give him time to think about this. This That's is fair. But you're not. You're you're missing the parentheses. Oh, <laughs> this is. Um, I I have put in my start of the week for next week in tight end. No, no. Uh, I am I am in. Hard rule right now. Handing, handing, or I'm handing it out on the Fantasy Football Bars podcast. I am allowing your start of the week of Will Disley. Okay. Good. I was about to say, Mike. See, you played that all wrong. What? You should have said your start of the week is Will Disley. He's not in the dock. He could have been your guy right then. That's that's Jason a fair point. Jason tried to preempt it. If you don't understand what's going on, we have a show doc every week. Last week, Jason decided moments after you know that he was going to put Will Disley in really early make the stake the claim cuz if you got him in the show doc they're your guy right. you, you have it, essentially but licked, of course, licked it you have a, yeah it's like if you take a cookie and you lick it it's your cookie and the reason i put That's him in was because That's such a good point Andy my start of the week at the tight end position is Will Disley it's not in the doc so it's your t- it's your start of the week mike uh it's actually it's in there right now yeah so Will it, Disley all right. okay let's do this let's do this <laughs> i'm fine with that and anyways my rule was going to be you can't rush to the dock to put whoever's playing Arizona. That's, that's yes, because just cheating. that's what I was doing. It's is cheating. I had Tyler Eifert in for Week Five solely because he plays Arizona in Week Five. So oh, I, thought, I thought Mike, you were going to say the rule is you have to wait until the Week Four show is over to put Week Five players. Yeah, that's in. a strong point too. That's we know Jason will cheat. Yes. always, always, always to so, win. Uh, sure, sure, to the detriment of all, but. Let's start. Let's go tight ends. Right. Let's just kick off the starts of the week at the tight end position. Uh, I have Will Disley. <laughs> I already said it. <laughs> no, I know. I'm going Austin Hooper against Tennessee. the The target share for Austin Hooper, his ability in this offense to you know just be a reliable target for Matt Ryan. Tennessee's actually given up points to the tight end on the year. So Austin Hooper, my start of the week. I think he has another solid performance for your team. Hooper was going to be. Who I put in until I saw that you already had him. Sweet. Yeah, t- tight ends are the most difficult starts of the week every week because the reality is here's who you here's who you start. You start uh, Kelsey, Ertz, Kittle if he's not on by, uh, Diz, uh, not Ingram. Diz, uh, Ingram, Waller, Waller, Mark Andrews, Greg Olson, Delaney Walker, and so we don't want to just constantly be saying those names. We're looking for someone else. So my start of the week this week, I'm going to make it T.J. Hawkinson. I'm okay. going to say that. This is you, – you, you're hesitant to play him based on the last few weeks, but if you're watching the game, he's still involved. He's getting valuable op- opportunities. This is an at-home game against Kansas City. I think I would be willing to start him. I just sure. I just like the the narrative that you're bringing up about the likelihood of them having to throw to, to catch up in this game is very, very high since every team over the last two years has pretty much had to do that against Kansas City. And so – He's a valuable pass catching option. He's a player that can, you know, find space in the vertical passing game and give you a big play. So I, I like that start of the week. And so my real one, like I said, it's Eric Ebron. I think that his target share can go up with T. Y. Hilton dealing with injury. But even if T. Y. Hilton plays, there's no guarantee that he makes it through the game. He exited last week as well. And Oakland is one of only seven teams to already allow over 200 yards to the tight end position. So I think Ebron's in a good spot now for that, those streaming the position. So that makes Will Disley our global yes. show start of the week. Our honorary, he plays the Cardinals start of the week. Which, well, and, and, and it's also he is better than the other three options we brought up. Disley is, he's a weekly guy now. I think he's moved himself out of a streaming option to me. So would you, so I, I think we would all play Disley over Hawkinson over Ebron. Would you play Disley over Hooper? Yes. This week I would. Yeah, this week. Yeah, against Arizona, absolutely. And the night, you know, the neat thing, depending on your perspective, whether you're a fan of the Seahawks or not, is this defense is giving up some points and some yardage. And so I think at home in Arizona, Kyler's going to get enough done against them. Russell is my start of the week at the quarterback position because yeah. Russell's going to have to throw the football. Arizona's defense, the low-hanging fruit here. But Russell will follow up a big performance last week. Russell's my start for this week. For me, it's Philip Rivers. I know he's traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast for a 1 p.m. Eastern game. That's always a little bit hard on those guys. But I think that the Miami Dolphins will be the salve that makes it okay. Philip Rivers, he's always consistent, never has those gargantuan, monster, huge performances for fantasy. 
But he does have those weeks where it is very simple. He can go out there very easily, throw for 250 and three against the Miami Dolphins. If I had him, I would start him. Okay. I, I picked him up to start him over Carson Wentz this week and am doing so. There, there's the back of my head fear that because Miami gives up 200 yards on the ground, if they start this game and Eckler and Jackson score the first two, three touchdowns, I'm a teeny bit scared that, you know, sure. what we hope from Keenan Allen and Phillip Rivers doesn't come to fruition, but it, on paper it should. <laughs> and it, it shouldn't be because of, this is like ancient history, but – like it, it's in my it's there it's in the back of my head we had years ago this is what they're the san diego chargers they were going to miami and it was just an, miami was not good at this time they were a it was like phil rivers was a smash streaming option at the quarterback position and they went and they got shut out by miami i know that's a very different miami dolphins team but i remember being being a hundred percent confident in rivers against a bad Miami team and then just traveling across the country. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it takes its toll. My start of the week, it's Maddie Stafford at home against Kansas City. Craziness where we are in, through week three with uh, the O. C. Daryl Bevel. But Matt Stafford is throwing the ball. <laughs> he has the most deep attempts in the league at the quarterback position, and that's what you're gonna need against the Kansas City Chiefs to keep pace. So I'm gonna I'm streaming Stafford in. I like him. All right, let's move to the running back position. My running back and wide receiver are both bounce back players. My running back's James Conner against Cincinnati. Uh, it's not been pretty for James Conner. James Conner owners are very unhappy with what they've received, and now they probably feel like they've been sentenced to suffer with it through the duration of the year because of the quarterback change and where this team is headed. But I think this specific game against Cincinnati, it's just a great matchup. And I think James Conner gets 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 you what you need. Sure. So my running back start of the week this week is Carryon Johnson. Carryon Johnson is set up this week. He has been non he is he has been uh, not as effective as you want, not as efficient as you want, but he's getting the volume and the opportunities that make it okay. He had twenty carries last week. He had a touchdown. He is the goal line guy. And he will be out there in passing situations, too. And the nice thing is Kansas City's going to need to pass the ball. Or uh, because of Kansas City, the Lions are going to need to pass the ball this week. When you're getting 20 carries and you're playing against the Chiefs, who are giving up the highest rush success rate in the league, it's a really good combination. The six most rushing yards per game. So I I, I think that you know the, the talent plus opportunity – Game script, uh, uh, implied point sure. total. There's a lot of reasons to say carry on Johnson could be uh, have a huge week this week. When one is faced with raging rapids in a river, yes, you need a confidence canoe. Oh, oh gosh. and Chris Carson confidence canoe. That's four C's. Alliteration is out of control with this start of the week. But Chris Carson against the Arizona Cardinals. Get right game. The Arizona Cardinals defense often the salve that a running back needs. And with Rashad Penny still dealing with his hamstring problem, the, the walkthrough problem, I'm going Chris Carson. I, I don't remember how long ago the words confidence canoe came up on this show. It was years yes. ago. But I appreciate it, Mike. And I feel like get in that boat. the irony is that this week, all three of our starts of the week happened to be my guys. Mike, James Conner. Chris Carson, carry on Johnson. Jason obviously just giving himself a shot in the arm. Not surprising. <laughs> right. I'm giving your guy a confidence yes. canoe. You're giving my guy a confidence canoe. This is a safe space for my guys this week. Let's go to the wide receiver position. I'm going to go with Mike Williams. I think he has the bounce back against Miami. I think it, you know we saw every single play go to, go to Keenan Allen last right. week. I think there's going to be opportunity for Mike Williams. If he's healthy, if he's out there, Keep an eye on the practice reports, but we're in a position now where you need to have some confidence to start, you know, Mike Williams or Emmanuel Sanders or Marquise Brown. There's the flex range wide receiver here. I think we expected more from Mike Williams to begin the year. He's dealt with injury, but this week I really like him against Miami and he's not matched up against Xavier Howard, who I do believe is a good cornerback who probably won't slow Keenan Allen down too much, but Mike Williams has the, the best opportunity to take a few extra targets. For my start of the week at wide receiver, I am going with 
There, look, there's only two wide receivers in the National Football League who've had double-digit targets every single week. Yeah. I can't take Keenan Allen, too obvious, but Tyler Boyd is the other one. Double-digit targets all three weeks, and now he's playing a perfect matchup where the Pittsburgh Steelers have been torched by the slot wide receiver this season. You, t you give me double-digit targets out of the slot against the Steelers. I'm all about that life. Tyler Boyd, start of the week. I'm going with Sterling Shepard. I'm continuing my alliteration at the start uh, starts of the week. But can you get four? Uh, oh, I had Eric Ebron, so I actually had three. This is a sensational moment in my life, fellas. Sterling Shepard, my wide receiver. You really need to change your quarterback at this point. All right, you give me a name. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> find, we'll find you somebody, Mike. Washington, they've given up the second most. Danny points. Dimes. Oh, dude, I could. I could. I'd be, I mean, I'm starting his wide receiver. Washington giving up the second most points, fantasy points to wide receivers, and that is barely second because they're right behind the Giants. There could be a lot of points going up in this Giants-Washington matchup. Especially, Vegas agrees. Especially to the, the wide receiver position. And Sterling Shepard was he was the man for Danny Dines. We got one more week of that before Golden Tate comes back, and we have a uh, reshuffling where period where we're going to have to see who emerges as a, as the number one wide receiver. But until then, Sterling uh, Shepard. Oh, Brooks is writing in Marcus Mariota. That's what I was going to bring it up. It's the only one that I shares. I would rather die. Well, now here now that's surprising because generally you will go with the joke over. You know, I'm, there there is no joke. There's I, no joking ever allowed when it comes to Marcus Mariota <laughs> and fantasy football. All right, one. Let me throw this out there. Not the same letter, but certainly alliteration. You could still go with Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, my <laughs> new. <st> <laughs> you do have to obviously spell it with a K, the last name with a K, if you do that. That's, that's fine. The, that's that's the fine. Way. I, he'd be okay with that. One or more Mortal Kombat style. Correct. Yeah. One more very important segment today. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. Look, last week was great with the Chiefs' Harrison Butker. This week will be even better with the Ravens' Justin Tucker. I just flipped it. It sounds like a great pick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A lot of research went into that. Tomorrow on the show, we'll have in or uh, out. So we'll give you more practice reports. We'll let you know our expectations, whether we think certain players that are fighting injury will be in there. A reminder that on Sunday, one hour before kickoff, Mike will be on Sunday Live. All of our social media channels, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. You can get the last minute news, start sit decisions, that type of thing. And you can get game day alerts at jointhefoot.com or fantasy football community. One last reminder to head over to footclangiveaway.com if you want to win a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. Otherwise, this show's a wrap, Mike. We're out. Three out of four alliteration starts of the week. I'm so impressive. I'm sorry I could not complete the quattro. That's okay. I think people will be more confident in your picks, the fact that you didn't. Matthew <laughs> Mafford is start of the week. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A signed Keenan Allen jersey was sold yesterday on auction for $61.42. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the registration code BALLERS, and save $5 towards your first purchase. There's hundreds of daily auctions. You can check out your favorite player and your favorite team. Apparently, Otherwise, we'll be back with the rest of the matchups tomorrow. Apparently, his name is John Matthew Stafford. It's different. And now you know. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.